The Collections module has specialized data types which are alternative to Python's general purpose built-in containers, the dict, the list, set, and tuple. The deck, the double-ended queue, is like a list, but the main difference is that it has fast appends and fast pops at either end. This won't be a theory lesson, so let's get to some code. Let's go ahead and import deck from the collections module. We've assigned range 5 to iterable. Deck can be called by itself without any parameters, in which case it'll just be an empty deck. But here, we are putting our ready-made iterable in there, and as a result, we have a deck with the values 0 to 4. We can append, so here we have d.append5, and the result is 5 added to the right side end. And we can extend with the extend function, which will take an iterable and it will add each item in turn. We've added items to the right side end, but what's unique about the deck is that it also has append left. We can add items to the left. Likewise, it has extend left, which will add every item in an iterable to the left side in turn. Here we have range 2 to 10. Earlier we extended D with range 6, 10, and the first value produced by this is 6, and that's why we got 6, 7, 8, 9. When we extend left, the first value produced here is 2, but we're adding to the left, so 2 is added first, and then 3, and then 4, and so on. And that's why the deck is from left to right, 9, 8, 7, etc. Let's clear the screen and reset D to be a deck with the values 0 to 4. We can pop, and so the rightmost item is removed from the deck and returned as a value. No surprises there, just like a list. Here it's 4, and we're left with 0 to 3. We can also pop left, and that's why the 0 is returned and removed from the deck. Decks also have the rotate method. If we call rotate1, what will happen is that every item in the sequence in the deck will move one space to the right, and the item that was at the minus 1 index will move to be at index 0. If we call rotate without providing a value, then it defaults to rotate 1. We can also rotate with negative integers, and it's just the reverse of rotating with positive values. OK, so let's consider the remaining methods for dex. We have copy, which makes a shallow copy as opposed to a deep copy. The count method will count the number of times that the item that you provide as an argument appears in the deck. The index method can receive up to three arguments. The first argument is the item that you are looking for, and it will return the index at which that item first appears in the deck. If you add a second argument, that will provide a start index, so it will only look rightwards after and including that index. If you only want to look between a start and an end index, then you can provide all three arguments the third argument being the end index. If you use dir to see which functions you can call, a Python pro tip for you is to use a list comprehension to filter out all of the methods that begin with an underscore. When we create decks, as we have done so far, they are unbounded. However, if we add a second argument, max len, then we dictate a size beyond which the deck won't grow. Let's move on to some examples. Here we've imported thread from threading, we've imported time for its sleep function, and we start off by creating a deck. The burn function here takes two arguments, direction and next source. What we're doing here is going into an infinite loop and through try, we will pass in either a pop or a pop left and that will act as the next source. If you try to pop or pop left on an empty deck, you'll receive an index error, and once we've picked that up, we can break out. 
If there are remaining items, i.e. if we haven't caught an index error, we'll print the direction and return the value of pop or pop left. Then we'll wait for a second. After all that's done, we'll print done. We're going to create a left and a right thread. Thread requires two keyword parameters minimum target, which is the function we want to call, and args, which is the arguments we're passing into that function as a tuple. Then we start the left and the right thread, and as you can see, it runs nicely. Dex are thread safe. For our next example, we're going to demonstrate the maxlen parameter. The body of our tail function utilizes a context manager. If you haven't come across them before, essentially in this use case, they ensure that after we have finished with the open file, that it's closed, so it cleans up after us. Files are iterables themselves, so we can return a deck with the open file as the first argument and n as the max len. In order to demonstrate this, let's use a context manager again to create a file with a hundred lines written, which say this is line number and then naught, one, two, all the way to 99 for that last line. And when we run the tail function, it gives us the last number of lines that we request. 10 is the default number of lines if we don't provide an argument, a second argument that is, when calling tail, but we've changed that to 20 here by passing it in. For our final example, we'll import timer from timeit and partial from func tools. You don't need to know too much about timeit, but we'll be using it to time short snippets of Python code. We'll be comparing decks to lists. What the partial function of func tools does is you provide it with a function and also any positional and keyword arguments, and the partial object that's returned behaves as if you've called that function with the arguments that you passed in when creating it. So it's handy in writing concise code. Here, whenever rotate deck is called, the deck will rotate by one, a thousand times, and we've written our own rotate list function that does the same thing effectively, but for lists. As you can see, I'm running this a number of times. Each time is given in milliseconds, and it's the time of execution for 10 times a thousand rotations of n equals one, and the deck is a thousand times faster at rotation than the list, which is very impressive indeed. If you've enjoyed this tutorial on DEX, then subscribe to be notified as soon as new tutorials become available, and support the channel by hitting that like button as well.